Doesn't look close to me. Let's see if this gets us toward the beach. Yo guys, and uh, welcome back to the second channel where we're doing another fast paced e-bike review video. This one on the Cirque X1 Premier, Sir Q. Real stout looking bike and I opened the box last night. It came very well packaged. Looking the bike over now, I don't see any damage at all. So let's touch on a few specs, give you a couple assembly tips, and then go do a full range test. Gonna be heading toward the beach. Very stoked for that. Now this being the Premier model, it does have a slightly larger battery than the normal X1 model. It's a 1,040 watt hours, uh, 52 volts, 20 amp hours. So pretty, pretty beefy battery. Yeah. It's got a Beifang 750 watt hub motor, pretty standard on these 26 inch bikes. You know, it's a fat tire 26. Uh, however, on these wheels, Check this out. It's got the uh, speed holes drilled in it. See, it's a little dusty. I actually unboxed this uh, and then got all windy today. Um, but these, I was looking up, I guess it's like an upgrade a lot of people will do on their fat tire bikes. They'll take the tire and tube out and drill holes to make it lighter. So that's the uh, first time I've ever seen that. And it does come with a seven speed Shimano and Look at this, mega range. I've never seen that before either. The last gear is super tall, so hopefully that's gonna help when you're in that top gear to get some pedal authority at top speed. Uh, speaking of top speed, they do advertise 20 mile an hour on electric only, but if you're pedaling, apparently it can go up to 28. The payload is 400 pounds and they advertise up to a 50 mile range on electric only, uh, up to 80 miles if you're doing pedal assist. It does have hydraulic disc brakes on the front and rear. You'll notice the built-in reflector and light up front, along with a little light on the back. I uh, don't know if that's hardwired into the bike or not. I guess we'll find out here in a bit. Uh, no fenders included. And of course, you could always add those pretty easy. And inside the box did come with a, a generic user's manual. So this kind of covers like info for all their bikes, it looks like. I didn't bother getting into that yet. Uh, aluminum pedals, seem good quality. The front axle and then uh, a tool. The charger is output at 58.8 uh, .8 volts at three amps. Again, I pulled this battery out the other day or was it last night? I don't know, I'm getting all mixed up. Yeah, twist that once and then come under here and boom, you drop the battery out. The charge port is on the back. Of course, you can just charge it while it's in the bike too. You have the little access hole. Uh, they do advertise these to be LG cells inside. And a lot of people ask about the longevity on these, these all these e-transports. You know, like, because if you got a few cells that go bad in this battery, um, you can rebuild these. It's, you need a solder gun and kind of got to be careful and know what you're doing, but you can take these apart and replace just a few of the batteries. They usually take those 18650 batteries. Real easy to drop this back in. You can single hand it, line those contacts up, and then there you go. Once it's latched up top, you can take your key out and it's locked in place. You'll notice it does have a spot for a bottle holder bracket. That's the ESC, electronic speed controller. And these are branded front forks. They're RST guides. Never heard of them before, but they usually don't see any brand at all. It shows uh, 95 millimeter travel. These are adjustable preload and do have a lockout on the right side as well. Look at this, a little pad here, like a anti-wear pad or something, kind of like that. I think that covers the basics. So let me give you some fast tips on assembly and then let's get going because it is already 6 p.m. and the sun's going down. I'm gonna start by removing this clamp and then dropping my bars on. Make sure you don't get the cables all twisted or anything. Put the clamp back on and then evenly tighten down these four stainless steel bolts. They got a four millimeter head. You can use the supplied tool. Just make sure your bars are centered in there and I'm actually gonna leave this loose until we get the front wheel. But you wanna make sure you have even gaps on the front and top of the clamp, unless it's a stepped clamp, but this one's not. Now we can put our front wheel on. Might be handy to have a friend with you to lift the bike, but hit that plastic clamp out. Sometimes there's a pad separator in there. This one doesn't have one. Uh, so go ahead and align your rotor, slip it between the brake pads. Should look like that. And then we can drop the axle bolt or whatever you want to call it in. Uh, you'll notice there's no safety for it to fall out, but it does have a, a recessed area. So as long as this is tight, it can't go nowhere. And don't think it matters which way this goes in. Just make sure you have a spring on each side. Oh, slider on in. 
put the spring and the nut on the other side. Make sure your wheel is fully seated down into the forks by pressing down a little bit. Snug it until you get, and you guys know how to do these cam locks. Snug it until you get a good amount of force uh, for it to close. Where do I want to point this? I'll point it pretty much down. I like that. Nice locking action. I mean, some people don't like these because uh, they, they're so convenient, but it relies on this little rubber bushing. Well, you know, if that mistakenly flips up, uh, your wheel is probably gonna end up coming off. Slap the pedals on, righty tighty on the right and lefty tighty on the left side. Sometimes people like to grease these threads, go and uh, steal into the aluminum. And of course I had to grab a wrench out of the box. The best wrenches ever, snap one flank drive plus. Love these, money well spent. They are ridiculously priced though, I'll say that. But if you've ever used them, you know how well they work and how well they hold up. There's also a, a video of how they're made and it is crazy. I mean, they, they go above and beyond making these wrenches. So I can see why the price is so high. Raise up this seat. Right here is the highest. Wow, that goes up really high. So well, I think we're, uh, we'll be good about here. And lock her down. And for the little light, it's got a pull tab and a battery. I don't know why I thought it might have been hardwired, but how do we turn this on? Ah, you just push that. Oh, it's got a few different settings. That's convenient. Here's how I look on the bike. It's got a real nice size. Front forks feel good. Now I can position my bars where I want them and snug these down the rest of the way. Always make sure to go in a cross pattern, evenly tighten them so you don't break the clamp. Take our screen protector off and to fire this up, I'm gonna long press that power button. Boom, here it goes, nice digital display. Oh yeah, I like that display. And how well you guys can see it. It's showing our voltage, 58.3, full on the battery. Trips at 0.5. We can cycle through with the button, power button, probably up. Yep. No odometers at zero miles. And it shows our range at 50 miles, and yeah, 0.5 on the trip. Not sure why that is. You see, it comes on assist one, but uh, we can turn it down to zero by pressing negative once or scroll up to, I believe it said, uh, yeah, nine. Nine settings for your power assist. To turn your headlights on, you simply press and hold the positive. And it's on, and it also dimmed the screen. Turn it off, same thing, hold that down. Uh, when you're on assist zero, it's still, the throttle still works. It's got a lot of juice. And if you hold down the minus, it does have the walking feature too for going up steps and such. Well, <coughs> Gus does not like rolling objects. <coughs> oh, you've seen that, huh? <coughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, I think that's enough to go hit the road to our riding location. So we'll see you there. We are starting in Farmingdale, New Jersey, which uh, we did another ride here before, and this is as far as we made trying to get to the beach. That was on a Himaway. So I figure we will uh, try to hit up the, the capital to coast trail system that is not complete, uh, but there's a few sections that uh, I'm gonna try to go investigate and check them out. And I did air the tires up, by the way. Max pressure is 30. I put them up at 25 PSI. You can see <laughs> this tube protector is like pushing through a good amount. I mean, totally fine unless you take a stick to the wheel. And something else I thought of while I was driving this sprocket, I said uh, the bigger one would help out our pedal uh, ability, but no, it's actually, this is gonna, it's quite the opposite. A bigger ring gear on the front would help us out with top speed. This is gonna give us a, a low range for climbing. Well, anyway, let's uh, let's go find some trails. And the seating posture feels great on here. Nice wide bars. We're in that first gear. Hearing a little click clack in, so that means probably uh, needs a derailleur adjustment. You have a nice bell. Look at that, good quality. I flip through the gears real quick. The rest are shifting good. Should be a trail up here somewhere. And that's top gear. So now I'm gonna go ahead and put it on pedal assist one. Oh, there it is, kicked in good. Shows your wattage as well. Right now only pulling 29 watts. Okay, let's see what kind of delay there is if we're on assist one, start pedaling. Uh, pretty, pretty quick. I mean, there really wasn't, let me say, yeah, there's like no delay at all. That's, uh, I like that. Assist two brings us up to 
Uh, about uh, 11 mile an hour. Maybe that's the trail. I don't know. Let, let me see. Assist three, just a touch more. I mean, you got nine power assists, so I, 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 I kind of like that. Instead of uh, five, you know, you, there's, there's a perfect gear for everybody in here without having to go in and make adjustments. Let's bring it all the way up to nine and see what this top speed is without putting effort into the pedals. I'm in, in top gear and we're doing 20 miles an hour. It did say 28 with pedaling. Uh, maybe maybe I read that wrong. Let's see if, is that, maybe that's a trail. Yep, that's gonna be it to the left. It does say it's closed on the map, but doesn't look close to me. Let's see if this gets us toward the beach. Should be awesome. Uh, bike feels amazing. I really, I already said this, but I love the seating posture. I'm up nice and high. These bars make me feel very, very confident. This is a super cool trail. I, I mean, I, I love doing these e-bike videos because it's just, it's just so nice to get out and try a new bike and try out new areas all the time. This is, this is stunning. There's a lot of pine trees in there too. I can smell them. Oh, I love that smell. Oh, there's a couple fawn up there. You probably didn't see them. Like usual, we're gonna be doing full electric. I might be rotating the pedals, but not gonna be putting power into it. This bike rides really nice with no hands. Oh, hit some soupy rocks though. So, uh, so we'll, we'll see what the range ends up being. I'll be happy with 25 or better, uh, but we'll, we'll run her down, make a few stops. Let's go. Uh, we're already going, but yeah, let's continue going. Look at that, nice, nice straight and true geometry on those bars. Here comes some more soupy rocks, let's go. Right through the middle, see how it handles it. Oh, oh. <laughs> little loosey goosey. But uh, yeah, I'm just gonna ride this, this thumb throttle. Oh, this is beautiful. I can't believe nobody else is out right now. Okay, maybe that's why, yeah, the line was dotted. Uh, yes, there's no bridge yet over 195. How about that? But maybe if you're watching this in the future, there will be one by then. Uh, I think I think I was reading only like 20% of this trail is, uh, is done. It's just a bunch of segments they want to eventually connect all together. Uh, we're gonna, it makes sense why nobody was on the trail, huh? <laughs> Ooh, look at the torque of that thing. I mean, look at this. If you, if you rip this throttle, it's just, it just lifts the front wheel up. This motor has a lot of power. Look at that's full takeoff right there. Ton of juice. I guess we can take this trail back instead of going the same way through. Got a good little incline, some roots. It's handling all of this just fine. Sorry if the camera's bouncing around. Woo! Yes! This looks like a little dirt bike. Don't know where this trail goes, but hopefully back to the road. We'll get around. Take the long way about. It just feels better rotating your feet too. Like riding the thumb throttle is cool. It's a nice option to have that. I don't like bikes that are uh, pedal assist only, but it, you certainly you feel like you have more control when you're rotating those pedals. But you don't know where this is going. There's a left, it's back to 195. Oh, this goes back into Alaire State Park, it looks like. There's some cabins over here. And the park is dead. Nobody's camping at all right now. Me and Jenna actually camped here a couple times. So we're gonna go out, bypass, uh, cross over 195. Ah, uh, that's why the park's so dead. It's closed. Why would it be closed in the middle of the summer? And we're going under 195. It worked out good. And now we're back on the trail. Runs along these old railroad tracks. Don't know if they still use them, but this should head right into Manasquan. About uh, seven, eight miles or so. You can see that 20 mile an hour is a true 20 miles an hour on GPS. Bridge over this highway. Yes, this is sweet.
like handles really nice. I did end up dropping the tires down. The 25 was way, way too stiff on the Odie's roots. Although the front suspension does work great. You know, the hardtail though. Nice little trailer park community with the trail right here. It's, just, uh, it's great. They got awesome access to it. I'm sure they weren't happy when they turned this into a public trail. Because again, I think, I believe this used to be railroad tracks. I'm not 100% on that, but if uh, my backyard was turned into a bicycle path, I'd be kind of annoyed. All right, I think we've made it to Manasquan. We're gonna cross over to Manasquan River and hit Point Pleasant instead. But I guess this is like downtown Manasquan. and that sticky air it's great ah. looks windy out there on the water they got these little tiki boats out too those things don't handle too good just flying over this marina a second ago a bunch of fishing boats here and check out that like center island thing i don't i don't know what's growing on it or why it's elevated so high but it's super cool looking and then you got some real deal fishermen here catching the big stuff hauling in all the goods miles on this odometer and on our GPS we're showing 12.8 fairly accurate there actually pretty darn good and it's showing our range is still 36 miles left what that when the light just going and now it just went off oh maybe you can double tap the screen or something oh I see no it's got a little sensor built in okay yeah so the light goes on automatically at night that's kind of cool and I've been rocking the rear light too. So I'll have to ride it around Point Pleasant, put some more miles on it, but that'll be more than enough to get us back. About to walk out on the racks and then go get some dinner. I actually bring the jet ski up here a lot, come out of this inlet. It's nice, there's some restaurants you can hit right on the water. And then, uh, you know, it's fun, fun to get out there on the ocean a little bit. Going across these barefoot because uh, flip flops, it's, it's those slippery flops. You ever have them? Like they get a little wet and then they're slipping and sliding under your feet. Wonder what, what the contract is for laying these these rocks out. Let's imagine that. Look at these uh, these custom ones. These are awesome. All locked together. Oh, this is so cool to climb across.
Well, that was a great time on the boardwalk, but it's time to go hit the trail. Let's uh, lay some miles down. to show you guys the headlight works very well could be a wider beam like in these turns but uh, definitely much brighter than some of the the other bikes I've ridden back in Farmingdale or Squonkum we are the only truck in the parking lot we are at 27 miles see we're still showing green on the battery so I'll have to run this down tomorrow uh, shown 11 more miles on our range here we are next evening gonna run the rest of this range out it's showing that we have an expected 10 miles left oh we'll find out what that is a nice little summer drizzle going on and we have ran down five of our our 10 expected miles left so i did want to show you too this shows your elapsed time and as you cycle through using the power button you get your your trip max speed, average speed, and back to the elapsed time you hit it again, that's when it goes to your odometer. So you see we've done four miles since we've left. And uh, yeah, that's fairly accurate. You'll also notice the battery voltage is down to 48.2 and we've gone red, but it still holds top speed at 20 mile an hour. You know, let's get a little water test too. Not a heavy rain, but definitely getting a good soak. I love how that light goes on automatically. And it's dark. That's a great feature. And that's it. It just shut off abruptly. We are at 36 miles on there. Time to go do an actual top speed run. This definitely has more than 20 mile an hour. I reached out to the company, was asking them about it. They said you got to go into advanced mode. So I already did it, but let me just show you what you do. You double press that uh, to get into the normal settings. And then you scroll down toward these little dots. I don't know how well you can see that, but all the way down here, hit enter, and then you can change wheel size, battery voltage, USB port on or off, which by the way, yes, it does have a charge port right here. And you can factory reset, but if you go down to advanced setting, you hit enter, you have to put in the password uh, from the factory. It is 1919 with 1919 put in press enter again and now boom speed limit it was set at 20 mile an hour again I, I don't know if you guys can even see this but I set it up to 99 mile an hour oh yeah this thing's got a whole lot more in it actually going down a slight decline right now but just holding the throttle down there's 30 32 almost 33 mile an hour down that very slight incline and now we're on the flats it seems to be a holding 30 no problem wow this thing is fast all right so final thoughts and close out on this bike the charger three at uh, three amps output it took around seven eight hours to fully charge that 20 amp hour battery now this seat if you like a soft seat you won't like this one it's it's very firm so you could always add a cushion over top or change it uh, not a huge fan of the little light while it worked completely fine you know it takes a separate battery the cr2032 little, little clip on light i mean it works i actually left it on the other night when it was charging and it, it lasted all night so plenty of battery life on that you'll notice i have the seat really low right now and that's one of the nice features of this bike because it's, it's universal you know jen is a lot shorter than me and she's able to ride this uh, with me when we did a ride the other day the bars are up high so we brought back the levers and they're pretty darn wide but she got used to it and really did like it a lot you know it was a shame i didn't unlock this bike on the ride because it is just so much faster once you unlock it but then again that's probably going to reduce the range too I, I was satisfied with the 36 miles we got uh, of course if you pedal a lot more then then you can you can really increase that substantially as I was saying before, fenders would be a nice add-on or option to have with this bike. But otherwise, I'm going to give it a giant thumbs up. It uh, survived my torture test, rode it a few times. I really like it. It's fast, it's fun, it's stylish. And that is the Cirque X1. Well, appreciate you guys tuning in and hope to see you in another one very soon. No nonsense, no how. Two over out. Out here on the river and this little guy just doesn't get it. He keeps digging a hole and it keeps filling back up with sand and water. Ha, ha, ha.
<laughs> you can't dig any deeper than that, guys. Come on, guys, show me your new move. Oh, look at that. Hops right up on that, that skid pit. No, not up there. And now he has assumed position, cleaning himself and relaxing. Let, leave the lid up so he doesn't slide off the back by mistake. <laughs> 